coming and hearing to me. I, I'll, I'll make sure that the next 30, 40, uh, 40 minutes will be quite useful to you, right? What I really want to cover is that everyone is talking about scaling agile, everyone is talking about different kind of frameworks which are there. Someone is talking about that, someone is talking about scaled agile framework, someone is talking about big agile, small agile, x agile, y agile, right? Now, the very first thing is that what is the use case, right? Because we are working in our organizations, all of us have different kind of experiences, right? The very first thing is that before we adopt any kind of a framework, like what is what is the need for this, right? When we already have uh, things like Scrum, XP, Lean, and all, right? And then on top of that, we are talking about additional frameworks, right? So before signing up for any framework, let's understand what the different needs are and how we can resolve those needs by ourselves and where the frameworks will fit into the picture. Because adopting a certain framework um, is, is easy to say and difficult to do. That's what my personal experience is, right? So first you really need to understand what is the use of that framework and what is your use case. Then you really need to map it out and then see how it goes. Okay, so what I will be talking about my real life experiences. Uh, basically, I'm working as a global agile lead uh, in in Petty Boost, where I'm responsible for agile rollout across the organization. So I have been working in products um, in which we have rolled out agile, where the product was being uh, developed in six locations, right? So what I will be doing during this presentation, I will be sharing my experiences that when we were rolling out uh, agile at six locations for one product and multiple people, what are the different challenges we face, how we resolve that problem, and if I want to do the same stuff with the frameworks, then I've taken an example of scale design framework. And then at the end I will discuss about that, okay, if you go for a scale design framework, what are the different kind of issues you can face or what are the different kind of things you need to be careful, right? Uh, not to take more time, let's understand what the business problem is, right? The business problem is really in the way that we are, we are not talking about small projects here. We, we are not talking about the products where five to seven people are working, right? We are talking about, when we talk about scaling agile, we are talking about the products which are the enterprise level products. When we say enterprise level products, what we really mean is that we mean that the products which are carried out at multiple locations, right? Which are the complex products which are carried out at multiple locations where not only five, 10 people, where 50s and hundreds of people are working. Right? Where the technologies are complex, where the systems are complex, where there are many, many dependencies. And in these kind of products, I want to implement Agile. Right? So, at the outset, when we say that uh, there are hundreds of resources on a project, we have to make sure how to manage the backlog, releases, people, etc. Then we really, really need to understand that the basic practices and basic frameworks like Scrum, XP, Lean, they will not work as it is. All of you agree with me. Right? They will not work as it is because Scrum says, okay, iterations every two weeks and then you have five to seven people, you have demo, you have retrospective, that's fine for a small team. Now what is the case when there are 10 teams, right? How you will get the things done and what kind of issues you will face, right? So before moving on to my next slide, that what all things I need to scale, I want to hear back from you based on your experiences, based on your organizations, what kind of issues do you see or, or do you face when you are implementing the bigger products? And then I will come to what issues we faced, how we resolved it, and how we can do it with the frameworks. I, I just open up to you guys that in the bigger products, in the bigger products which are in uh, different locations, lot of people, what are the different issues you face? Communication. <coughs> Collaboration is very important thing. Communication <coughs> is important thing. Time zones of the different countries. Of, you know, There's a difference in time zones. Culture. There's a difference in the culture. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? Yes. A lot of people, like in the outside, western, western part, they yeah. don't want to. Uh, culture differences, like if you enter a room yeah. or uh, people talk to people, they don't give you a chair. Yeah. In India, we do. Yes. We do offer a chair to a lady or a person. There is, there there is, there is a, a lot of cultural differences yes. over there. There is a big cultural difference. Yes. What else? Alignment. There is lack of alignment between the various parties. Lack of alignment in the various parties, I mean there is no connection. I am doing my sprints, UK is, is doing its sprints, US is doing its own sprint, but what is the connect? Right? What is the bigger picture? What else? You were saying something? Suppose we are at uh, multiple locations. Uh -huh. each, each team is developing some part of 
I face is that yeah. there are multiple teams and the final delivery is huge. It will take a lot of time to deliver yes. the final delivery. Yes. Now, in, in, in Agile team, we are doing a small, a small chunk, but yes. a small chunk is not sufficient. We need to plan, we need to estimate, tell to the client yes. what is the deadline, yes. how do I forecast, how do I estimate, how do I project in six months' time what I am going to achieve, yes. and what do I tell to the customer. So basically, the gap is basically in the planning. There are multiple things that I should talk about. If I, if I slice it down, the gap is in planning, planning in the sense that okay, I can plan for a scrum team, but when I have to plan for six teams, how to go ahead with the release planning, right? That is the important thing. The second thing you talked about is that the engineering practices, right? How how will I make sure the things are continuous integrated and all? Right? Lot and lot of things are there, but let us see what I have captured in the slides. Yeah. And dependent blockers, like if there are multiple teams and <coughs> one yes. task is dependent on the other team. Yes. So what is what is the mode that we are able to capture those dependencies? Multiple things here. Are there any tools which are capturing this de uh, these dependencies? The other thing is that are we setting up a cadence between the teams where we are meeting and we are discussing about these dependencies and how these dependencies are getting resolved, right? The other very important thing which I wanted to hear is that what kind of tools are in place, right? Lot of organizations are using Jira. Lot of organizations are using Rally and other stuff, right? But understand that. One, one of the things which I really want to, uh, wanted to listen is that this is not just one team. Now we are talking about the engineering teams. Other than the engineering teams, there are a lot of other organizations also. For example? Delivery is there. Stakeholder. Let's, let's take a real, uh, some, some real life example. Support. Huh? Support. Product management, very, very important, right? That is one of the things that we have also struggled. So I have a control on the engineering. I'm an engineering manager. I have a control on the engineering. I can control all of the people, right? But if product management is not buying into agile, right? Product management, if they are not giving me the stories, then what will I do? And in a, and in a real complex project, what is happening? The development team is here. The, uh, the product management may be in the US, or they may be in UK, or maybe in Canada. Are they available to talk, right? And how is the whole organization structured? Generally, the product management structures are very, very different. The reporting lines are very, very different. I am reporting into a engineering head. Product management may be reporting into a product management head. There is no link in between, right? The sense of their target is very different. They want to sell the product. I am developing the product, right? So product management is very important. The other thing is the services organization, the support organization, right? There, there is a support organization also who is, who is interacting with the customer for your day-to-day -day issues. There is a service organization who, who do installations and all, right? And if your if your product is a big product, then there will be sales team across the locations, right? So when you are rolling out these things, you just don't need to worry about uh, engineering. Engineering is just one piece. You need to make sure that when you are rolling out something, everyone should be alive. A very very simple example, I can say I am using Jira in engineering, but what about the other uh, eight teams? Are they using Jira? Right? Are they using the same versions of Jira? Right? In, in one of my uh, cases, what happened is that though everyone was on, was on Jira, but <clears throat> there was one organization in, in which all the people were contractors in Canada and they were not on the VPN. It, it, it's, it's looked like a very, very simple problem. They were not on VPN. Not on VPN means what? 
they cannot log in using the Pitney Bosch user ID and password to the Jira, right? They had their own different instances. Now, how to connect these two instances? Are you getting my point? I am working here. I am working in my Jira. There is a different product management. They are working in their own Jira. I am talking about the scaling thing, right? As soon as I talk about the scaling thing, these things act as a major, major role for. Right? So lot and lot of factors are there which we really need to consider. Okay, I'm rolling it out on a, uh, on the uh, on the scaling factor, but what are, what are the different things I need to care about? The very first thing which I talk about is that, so first time I'm, I'm talking about what all things we need to uh, we need to care of, and then I will talk about uh, that, how we have done it, and then I will go forward to what frameworks provide us. Frameworks will provide us the structure, right? But the other things we have to resolve on our side, right? Framework will not tell me that, okay, make sure that the Jira is there across the same or not. That is something we need to evaluate first and then, then we really need to see. And then we will see how to fit in the things in the framework. The very first thing is that the team structures and geographical distribution across organization. When I say across organization, it means not only engineering, it means everywhere, right? One thing I want to ask you is that when I, take, uh, when I talk about team structures, what I really mean by that? So let's say I have got six teams, right? What kind of team structure issues can be there? What kind of, so let's say there are six teams. Two teams are in India, one team is in UK, one team is in the US, one is in Canada. What kind of team structure uh, issues can be there? Expertise is one, generally they think that open an offshore center and people will be uh, ready to work from the day one, right? That may not be the case. Yeah, the communication gap might be there because of time gap. Like communication gaps will be there because of the time gap. Uh, experience, the experience, level of experience will be very, very different, especially when we are working with the US teams. There are people who are working in the organization for 20 years and then we have freshers in India who are working on the same product, right? That's where the big challenge is. Yeah. Reporting structure. Reporting structures are different. And sometimes PO, the main PO is in US and uh -huh. you don't have access to that. You don't have access to that. That is very realistic. Yeah. What I really wanted to, yeah. Proxy managers also don't come twice, actually don't tell the same thing. Yeah, you are right. You, you, you don't get that kind of thing. Exactly. What I really wanted to hear is that in terms of the team structure, how you are dividing the work, right? So. What, what general uh, tendencies say that if you have got multiple uh, teams, so try to make sure that each team is as independent as possible, right? Uh, if there are high dependencies between the team that they are working day and night, okay, I have checked in this file, have you checked in that file, have you tested this, I have written a unit test case of this, developer is sitting in India, the tester is sitting in the US, right? If these kind of scenarios are there for, uh, for, for scaling agile and all, you are definitely going to fail, right? So lot of time what people really do is that they, they divide the teams based on the components. Right? So for example, there is a rating component, for example, there is a web service component, there is a SaaS component. So as independent a team is as, as good it is. Right? So definitely, and this is not just for engineering, you have to look across the organization what kind of team structures you have. Right? And this will definitely need alignment. And this also means that all the teams should have their scrum masters, they should be product owner, they should be a right representation. This is, see, every case is a different case, right? Uh, I cannot say that this is the only thing, but this is one of the best practices. The best practices is coming from the fact that the more independent teams are, the less dependencies between the team, the better they can produce. This seems This seems very traditional way of thinking anyway. This is component centric specialization. This is, when I say specialization, I mean it is more in terms of the dependencies when you are scaling. So, yeah. So let me let, yeah. let me take an example from the product which I use. Right now, in that particular product, this is the e-commerce based product. In that product, we have a different kind of uh, modules. You can say there is a backend module. Uh, there is a uh, let's say there is a backend module. There is a hub module. There is a rating module. Let's say three basic things. Right. So now, if I if I talk about uh, a use case where there are six teams and all the six teams are working pieces of the human module, right? So that is one use case. So there will be a daily dependency between six teams on the human module, 
right? Now there is a, another use case where India team is specialized in the admin module, and they their responsibility is dedicated towards that. The US team has a responsibility for rating, and there is another team which has responsibility for this to make sure that the dependencies are less. If there are too many hands off during the day, it will be very very popular. Might not be the software, yes. Dependency. So as much as independent, as much as less dependency, that will be a better. So it can be components, it can be features. I mean, I'm not saying it is only components. What I'm talking about more in terms of less dependence. You have to make sure that if the teams are too much dependent on each other, scaling the field. Are you talking about geographically? Huh? You can split, yes, you have to split geographically also. Otherwise, there will be high dependencies. Dependencies on what? Dependencies, let's say I'm a developer. Let, let me take an example. I'm a developer. You are a developer. He is a tester. India, US, Australia. Right? Huh? This seems like a wrong design. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Let's not go by that design. That kind of a thing. Try to make sure that as much as independent the teams are, as much as less dependencies are there, that will be better. So that means you are saying at one location you should have special answers at the location. Yes, yes, definitely. Without without any difference. Because if there are high dependencies, that would be yeah, so an That's what I'm saying. You have to really figure out what works best for the product. Every product is a different product. So what I'm talking about is that what are the different things you need to take care of. And that's what I'm saying. It is a single line, team structure and all. It is a big thing. Okay, moving ahead, the next problem is, which you can face is that in terms of backlog, how, how you're managing the requirements. Managing the requirements for one team is, is, is simple, but managing the requirements for six teams and, in, and on top of that, there is a collaboration of how the releases and everything is going on. That is very, very important, how you are doing that, right? The other important thing is, in terms of tooling, very, very important. What kind of project management tools you are using, unit test automation with different groups and all. Not only one group, this means different groups, right? If you're, if you're launching one tool, make sure that the tool has to be across, right? Lot of time it happens that there are, there are a lot of uh, organizations where a few people pop up and say, oh, I want to use uh, Valley, I want to use this, I want to use that, right? For your product, one team, that's fine, but you're talking about rolling out at the organization level. How will that work out? If I move ahead, what is the meeting cadence, right? Scrum teams meeting is fine, yeah? In a, in a typical <coughs> scrum team, you will run the daily scrums, you will run Sprint planning, you will run uh, different kind of retrospectives and all. But now you are talking about the program level. So there has to be a cadence for the program level meetings. There has to be a cadence for the team level meetings. What those meetings are. Reporting and dashboards. When you are working on the program level, you really, really need to make sure how you are reporting things are. Right? How you are reporting the things, how the dashboards are. Are there any dashboards for defects? Are there any dashboards for for the product, are there any dashboards for the platform, how each team is performing, how is being performed at the global level, right? That is something which you really, really need to understand. And I am saying again, scaled agile framework or DAG will not help you in these things, right? They will give you a framework, okay, put the pieces inside that. But what we really need to do is that for our respective products, we really, really need to figure these things out. Otherwise, it will be a big problem at this time. Important. And, and this covers a lot of things. So we, we, we talked about a lot of very, very important things in terms of the soft skill training. There are, there are very, very uh, different thoughts in geographies, right? US people may think differently, I can dif uh, think differently, right? Those kind of trainings are there. Definitely if we are, let's say if we go for that or scale the cell framework, right? Then definitely there is a huge training which is required across the floor. Right? When I say cross the floor, it means that if there are 100 people, all those 100 people need to be trained on scale as I. Otherwise, they will mess it up very, very badly. Right? So all those trainings are very, very important. So we really need to figure out, okay, if you are going for a framework, everyone need to be trained on that. Even if we are not going for the, uh, for the framework, we need to make sure that everyone should be basic 
trained in agile. When I say everyone, it means the service organization, it means the, uh, the customer organization, it means the IT organization, it means everybody. Everybody should be well versed with the concept, right? So let's see. So this, this was, I just talked about certain problems which are there and, and on top of that there's definitely the other things like how you will do the architecture, how you will you know, do the architecture at the small level or architecture at the bigger level, right? And all those kind of things, how you will manage the risks and everything, all those things are there, right? So I have captured few slides from my product where, where we have tried to figure out few things, right? And I'm just taking care of uh, that thing in these slides. The very first thing I talk about the team structure. Right, designing the team structure. What you really need to make sure is that if you have got six teams, you have got seven teams, you really, really need to make sure that everything is jotted down clearly. Who is the scrum master, who is the BA, who is the architect, who is scrum master and so on, right? But this is one product, one product, multiple teams are working on, right? One product, multiple teams. So I think it's a typo for a project. Yeah, it is team. One product, multiple teams, but this is not sufficient, right? On top of that, you have to make sure that there are program level roles required, right? There is definitely people identify as the chief product owner, the chief BA, chief architect. Scrum of Scrum Masters is very, very important. This is the person who will run the multiple scrums, right? So I am running my independent scrum in India, you are running in US, you are running in UK. But who is on top of that, who is synchronizing all these things? That is the Scrum of Scrum Masters. The chief QA, the main person in the QA who is who is aligning all those things about, right? And definitely, when you are doing continuous integration, automation, and deployments, and all those things, there has to be expert people who are sitting on the top. Easy to write it on the sheet, very very difficult to you know put it in reality. Most of the times, just 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 one second. Most of the times, what I have seen is that it is when when you have got six teams, it is very easy to put okay who's the product owner, who's the scrum master, and all. But this can take months and months for teams to get into. And when I come to the bigger picture, then definitely the buying of people to get into these roles and getting them assigned on these things, this is this is really, really critical. You were saying something? I was just saying that I'm slightly confused. You said this is, there are six teams. There is a one product. Uh, in one product, there are six teams which are working on. So you have to jot it down what those teams are, what the different roles and responsibilities. So each team you're saying is an independent product owner? There has to be one who is, who is responsible for this thing. This is a role. I thought product owner is for product. So this is this is this is one team. This is this is one area. You you need one person. If I if I talk about the realistic product where there are six seven they, they, they need it. If there are hundreds of, let's let's take an example. If there are, so that's right, it is, it is a big product. If there are 100 people working on a project, right? On a product, 100 people are working. For those 100 people, one product owner is not sufficient. He need to be available with everybody every day. Understand that. Product owner has to be available every day. This is a role. This is not a person. This is a role. Okay? I, I, yeah. That's why I'm saying this is a rule. Yeah, this is a rule. This is on the organization how you decide. Your organization, you're having one-on-one mapping. We have a one-on-one mapping because the locations are different, right? So every scrum is separate product. Yes, yeah, we, we do have. And in, in few cases, uh, in few places we have like the BA playing the role of the product owner, right? So that's where I'm saying every case is a different case. But what we really need to make sure is that this role is considered, not the person. Person can be a multiple person. Moving ahead, defining roles and responsibilities. I have laid down what this role and responsibility is that. Next thing is very important is that, what is the definition of each role? And each person should understand very, very carefully. That, okay, if I'm a scrum of scrum masters, what I really need to do? So you really need to figure that out, what those responsibilities mean. Important things. Sorry, yeah. Scrum of scrum masters is the one. Who, who is managing the things out? According to the manager of all the scrums. Manager of all the scrums, he is responsible for all the scrums and getting out the things. You can have additional roles on this. I'm not saying there is no additional role. You can you, you, you cannot change the organization structures. I know when, when we started uh, Agile 10 years down the line, it was like that managers are not required and all. Right? So that thing is not there. You will definitely have those roles as per the organizational structures and all. You cannot uh, deny those roles. But these. 
We are using Scrum, we are using Lean, we are using uh, some of the scale agile practices. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. It doesn't look like less So I'm not, I'm not coming to framework right now. I'm just talking about the basics right now. Then I will come to the framework. That's so what the framework after. So simply, when you say Scrum Master, the engineering phase in product needs and responses to the this is This is my definition. This is my, so that's what I'm saying, these are my templates, which I'm using here. And that's what I'm saying, when, when, when you are going it, you really, really need to define what this means for you, right? So that is very important. Every organization is different of that. Then, very important, what are the different kind of meetings you really need to make sure? Okay, that's fine, I talk about scrums and all, all those things, but the differences are, for example, on top we have the platform planning meetings, we have the release planning meeting, we have the platform level retrospectives, we have the scrum of scrum meetings and all, we have the story workshops, we have the media meetings and all, right? So you really need to make sure from the holistic approach, right? It is not just basic four or five meetings, you are coordinating a big product, what all things are required in that product. And there is, there is no uh, simple template or one final template here. This is very, very specific to the organization. What things you want to do in your organization, these are the things which we are trying to implement. Are we 100% successful? Yes and no, right? But this is the basic performance we are doing. Okay? Then definitely uh, how we are doing the planning. This again is a, is a topic in itself. So when we have got six teams, how you are going to do with the release planning. What we adopt is that we do the release planning in three steps, right? Three steps in the sense, first we have a review, then we go back, each team goes back, then they meet again, then they decide on the next step, then we go back and then we finalize how we are putting out the things. What is uh, what is advisable here in terms of release planning is that people can be co-located, that will be much, much faster, but in reality, because of the budget constraints and all, this, this plays a very, very, Critical role. So, who is the chief product owner is responsible for this? When when I talk about the uh, roles and responsibilities, the top person. Huh? Two weeks. Yeah. So this again is a big topic. So, but again, what we really need to make sure is that we we work out in such a way that there is there is a provision for. It. Now. I have touched on, on, on certain things. Now, how you go about doing it, right? One way you can do is that you figure out all those aspects, right? That how to do this, how to do that, what, what to do here, what to do there, right? So you can, you can do something like that. Or you can try to look into what different frameworks are available, right? So to implement Agile at scale, there are different frameworks available. Um, there was a gentleman who talked about that. I'll, I'll just give you a view on the scale design framework. And then there are others like Enterprise Scrum, Holistic Software Engineering, and so on. So there are frameworks which are there, right? So let's understand. I will take a quick review into a scale design framework. Let me just show you what scale design framework is all about. And if we implement scale design framework, what are the different kinds of uh, things you need to make sure of. It is not like that, okay, you, you, as a, you as a senior person of the organization, you raise a hand, oh, I want to do that today, or I want to do scale agile framework today. It is, it is not that easy. There, there are a lot and lot of things which you really need to take care of, okay? So let's first look at the scale agile framework, what this scale agile framework is. This is a very complex slide. Let me walk you through this. What this says is that there are things at the team level, right? Each scrum team level. There are things at the program level. Uh, program level basically means that at the release level. So let's say there are five teams which are working. So all these five teams are churning out their sprints, the two weekly sprints. Those two weekly sprints are getting um, consolidated or collaborated at the release level, which they call it as the agile release train. So that is, these things are getting collaborated at this level for every release. And there are dedicated people who are working on this, there are product owners, and uh, there's a product management, there are agile teams, there are developers and testers, 
you are you are making sure for the port quality for all these things. So this is this is a mix of the things. There is a scrub here. We are, we are implementing XP with all those things, right? And then the team level, the release level, and on top it comes the portfolio level, right? When I when I talk about the portfolio level, that means that okay, we have got multiple releases working, right? There are multiple releases which are going on in the product. How you manage those things? The top layer also covers about how you manage the different kind of um, different kind of budgeting. How you do all those kind of things, right? How you do the budgeting for these kind of products. So this is this is a complex framework. That's why I just wanted to give you a bit of a hint of how this works. Three levels again: the team level, the release level, and the portfolio level, right? And as you can see, that there are different kind of roles and responsibilities. There are different kind of uh, new terminologies. There are different kind of practices which are there. So when you are implementing, when you are deciding, you have to go with the scale agile framework. You have to make sure that most of the people in the organization should be well versed on these things. If you think that you cannot do that, if you think that the organization cannot fund it, you really, really need to make sure of that. That how you want to proceed. Then the main the main crux of my uh, presentation today, right? But is your organization ready to adopt a framework, right? So if you are going for a framework, what are the different kind of challenges which you may face, right? How much time I have? Seven minutes. Huh? Okay. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, that's fine. So, okay, so we are on time. So, let us evaluate that if we are planning to implement scaled agile framework or DAD or anything like uh, like that. What you really, really need to think through, right? It is, it is not that straightforward. The very first thing which I want to talk about is that required changes and flexibility in the organization, right? Very, very important. If you think that you are as a rigid organization. Where, where you know that it is, it is not possible to change people in product, in engineering, in services and all. If you think that those kind of issues are there, you really, really rethink whether you can implement the big frameworks or not, right? Because this requires changes in the organization. You need to have different kind of roles who are responsible for different things. Second thing is that change in mindset of the senior leadership. I have seen lot of, lot and lot of examples where scaled agile framework is being used as a scapegoat for the failure of the product, right? Take an example. I am uh, I'm the uh, I'm the engineering head. I am responsible for rolling out the product. Every product runs into a very very tight timeline, right? Every product goes into a very tight line. And on top of that, I said, okay, let's implement scaled agile, right? Why will I do that, right? When when it will add more of the risk and more of the time and all, right? Do I really have the bandwidth to train my organization across? Do I really have the bandwidth to make sure that people are spending time on this framework and leaving aside their product delivery? Yeah. Yeah, I, you just said uh, framework will, will eliminate risk or it will, it will, uh, it is both. It will el eliminate risk in the sense, it will eliminate risk in the sense that, um, uh, that you are going by a framework and the framework, they, it is a well thought framework. Right? That is a way you can eliminate risk to make sure you are covering different paths. It increases the risk also at some times because it adds a lot of complexity on the organization. Right? So if the complexity, complexity it will increase if your organization is not flexible. Right? So let's say you are a product management. I am engineering. Right? I can implement in my team, but being a product management, you you are a left hand. You will not do scale as framework. Do whatever, and you are the VP of the organization. Right? Do whatever I cannot implement. It's across all levels and new roles, right? It is not like that. Once, uh, once scrum team leader change agent, change agent required at all levels, especially in the leadership and the middle management level. If people don't have buy-in there, then the framework <coughs> like this cannot be successful. Other things, this is as I discussed about that. This can be considered as a scapegoat for failure. In terms of practices, you need to make sure that when you when you're going for scale agile framework, there's a combination of Scrum, XP, and Lean. If you think that your your organization is not trained in that, then rethink on this. So you have to make sure that everyone across the floor should be trained on what is required on this floor. 
if people are not trained, this is a problem. Then, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and automation are expected to be in place. Right? If these practices are not in place, you cannot be successful with this thing. You have to make sure, and this is a gap with most of the organizations. If this gap is there, you have to really make sure that you fix that gap first. And there are, there are, there are plans to fix that gap. Of course, this is considered as a heavy framework. Uh, that's what was discussed in the DAD, uh, DAD workshop also that we get. This is, this is considered as a heavy framework. There, there are a lot of new terms and predefined processes which, which you are uh, supposed to adopt. Keep up with the pace of the evolving framework, which is, which is very important. So what, hap what happens is that this framework is uh, releasing their next versions every year, right? So when you get a next version every year, multiply it by 100 people who should be aware of this. Multiple people across different organizations, right? Which is, which is, which is very, very important. Easy to misuse and introduce last release tendencies, then that is agile removed. This is also, as, as you learn this framework, this is also one of the main uh, issues which is coming up. And there is a there is a there is a good upfront cost. There is a good upfront cost in the sense what it recommends is that if you have got 100 people, all those 100 people should be trained on scale agile, and per certification cost approximately 100 dollars, right? They should be scale agile. Uh, they should be scale agile certified. Then there are certifications, separate certifications for developer. There are separate certifications for uh, scrum masters. There are separate certifications for product owners. You have to make sure that it is same across the organization. So whenever you are adopting it like that, you have to make sure there is a cost which is covered as part of your budget. And the other thing is that. One of the basic uh, basic principles what scale as a framework recommends is that whenever you are doing a release planning, people should be co-located, right? Putting so many people at the same location, 50s and 100, it is it is good to say hard to do, right? Who, who is going to go ahead and give you all those budgets and all? So if those things are not there, you have to really make sure that there are ways to collaborate, right? Either you have got the video conferencing or you have got the other things and all. But if you really, really, ritually want to follow the framework, you this is this is highly recommended that the co-location is there because the release planning is expected to be done in two or three days, right? If you really want that kind of a release planning with so many people's participation and all, this acts as the go block in few days as well, if the budgets are not there. Co-location of the whole team. Yes, that's what it recommends. These are the issues which we are facing. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are we are slowly moving towards this, but of course we, we are not getting so many of the budgets. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody will give me. This is, this is absolutely right. No, but but there are organizations which are but there are organizations which are doing it. For example, there are Cisco lot of organizations which they do it. this kind of a thing. Cisco Bangalore, they are doing Cisco it. Bangalore do yes. it. Or yes. Apple do it. Yes. 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 And they do it. <laughs> Yeah, they are teams which but are But you do you get train the leaders and you ask them to train the team. You don't get the hundred percent members trained. That's it. Hundred percent training I don't know, but co location for release co planning is being done. I yeah, it, it is you, done. I cannot work without that and Cisco yeah. is completely watching on yeah. it. That I but again, I'm but surprised again, on this hundred yeah. people getting trained on safe. That's trained on safe, safe, I even I don't know. Yeah. That is a requirement. That's what I'm saying. This is a requirement. So if, if someone is working on safe and the scale of that framework, he has to be trained on this. And, Sorry, yeah. So that's fair. It is, it is, it is more in, it is, it is not like that me as a program manager can go ahead and, you know, roll out scale, uh, roll out safe at the organization level. I cannot do that. It is, it is more in terms of there has to be a senior leadership buy-in. There has to be topmost technical people who understand and who have buy into implementing this framework. And then only these frameworks can be implemented. That's, that's where with, with, with this whole story I just wanted to tell you is that there, there, there are different things which we need to take care of for scaling, what can be the different solutions, and if you want to go with a framework, what are the different kind of things you can do with the framework. And what are the different kind of issues and things you need to make sure if you are implementing the framework. Okay, I'm open to questions now. Uh, any any other questions I can address? Yeah. 
which is which is which is which is very right, and that's that's one of the things that because sometimes these frameworks get so much overwhelming that the whole that's the very first thing I said. My as an engineering manager, my focus should be on delivering the product. But at the same time, if my focus changes from delivering the product to making sure that I'm overwhelmed with the framework, that is something I need to make sure. Definitely. So they are, they are covering the scale design framework. I think it is. Yes, they they assess organization teams, mm -hmm. individuals, and say that what is the No, both, they, this I understand. There, there are a lot of frameworks in the market which in which you put up the data and they will advise you where you are, whether you are red, green, yellow, or different parameters. Agile, that is agile readiness. Are, are they talking about? Sure, sure. I, I'm not sure if they're talking about whether you're ready for uh, scale design framework. I haven't checked. Yes, so, yeah, so this is this would be independent. So I don't know that organization. So this would be independent of frameworks. So basically, just checking the health of the. Uh, yeah, I it is, it is, it is more of a Ajari compass. Yeah. Yeah. You can really see okay on different ten parameters whether you are red, green, yellow, or. Exactly. Yes. Okay, any other questions I can address uh, for today? And then, uh, you know, we understand that the scale agile framework is, is a little more prescriptive than what that is. Yes. So does the scale agile framework give some prescriptions, some guidelines about having what kind of these structures and, you know, we discuss about these? It is, it, is, it is very detailed. So what I what I showed you at the slide, uh, this is a workshop itself which we attended for being SPC for four days. And that, that four days were also the beginning beginning to go ahead. So it is it is very, very detailed, very, very deep. It goes down to the level, okay, if you have got 10 teams at one team level, what kind of a framework you, uh, you adopt, and at the same time, how you do the estimation, what methodology of estimation. Okay. So it, it goes deep to, the, uh, to that level. And does the state design framework give, give some direction about how to do the team infrastructure projects? It doesn't talk specifically for the infrastructure projects. It, it, it talks in general. I haven't seen anything. Uh, we, we can check that if there are any specific case studies for infrastructure, but I haven't seen uh, as such. This, this, is this, not, yeah. and this is not product specific. This is, this is not product specific. Thing. This uh, is what do you mean by that? Like, at the example, primarily we're talking about a product, right? Product co located teams, but I'm maybe I'm working in the services industry. Yeah. I'm working in application, which is. Right, right. So that, that, that you can figure out how you want to put it. I think that, that is also related to his question. So that that you can see. So if, if it is a maintenance piece or not, you can you can really look forward to Kanban also. And you can also. Yeah, yeah. You, you can. So I, I'm not talking about the scale that you can work for Kanban. What I'm talking about is that if you're running multiple teams, if there is one team which is specific to uh, sustainance and all, you can plan on that. So do you have Scale agile is scaling up at the platform level, at the higher level, not at the team level. So you can have team level, you can have any framework. What scale agile framework recommends is the uh, cup at the team level. So that you really need to see. I mean, that's where it is very, very specific to a product. That you really need to see how you pick up. Right? Thank you very much for your time today and it was a wonderful audience. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, I'll be here. So you can you can ask me anything. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you.